His love penetrates me, new life did He give. Each of my heart does, my Savior now live. His love penetrates Aloha, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the channel of Kona Faith Center. I am so glad that you're here and a part of the audience. And I'm doing an interview today with my friend Malie. And she's kind of like a daughter to me because <laughs> when we traveled on missions trips when she was younger, I was the mom because the mom wasn't with her. But we've known each other a long time, but we're going to go ahead and get started. And Malie, why don't you just tell the audience something about you know, yourself, where were you born, and those kinds of things. Yeah, uh, I was born here on the Big Island of Hawaii in Kealakekua. I'm 27 years old. I uh, have a beautiful son. His name is Dylan, and he is four. Um, I'm also a teacher. I teach at Ho'okana Elementary, fourth grade. And I need a little more information, <laughs> so you want to tell me about um, a little bit about your family or um, maybe about your some of your mission trips or your homeschooling or, you know, just... Oh, yeah, sometimes. sure. Um, so I uh, was homeschooled from fourth grade until I graduated high school, um, and when I was about nine is when we started coming to church. Um, it was actually at a different church. And then my parents uh, felt like God was calling them, so we switched churches. Um, and then since I've been coming here, I've gone on three missions trips, uh, two to Mexico and one to Guatemala. Um, and we also went on the Israel trip in 2013, which was awesome. And I have been serving um, at this church since I got here um, in various ministries, but the longest one has been the praise and worship team. Okay, C can you tell me a testimony and something that has happened in your life that Jesus has done for you? There are very, very many things, <laughs> obviously. Um, the number one thing that he brought to my attention for this interview was the fact that he has shown me and over and over again shown me how much he loves me and how valued I am and how much worth I have. Um, I spent lots of time when I was younger uh, not really understanding it and not, not fathoming and being able to understand that he would love me or why he would love me. I'm very uh, performance oriented, and so I'm, I really care about the checklist and checking things off. Um, and so I had this mindset of, if only I can achieve this, if only I can get straight A's or do well in my job or all of these different things, then I would be worthy and then I would be able to you know, receive his love and feel like I deserve it. Um, because of those feelings of inadequacy, I would put myself into not great circumstances, and the, while it's cliche, I would look for love in the wrong places. Uh, he showed me over and over again, though, that there's nothing that I can do or not do that will make him love me any more or any less. Um, back in February of this year was when I had the real revelation of that. I was actually here um, for an ILT thing for the teachers, and Pastor Jason was here, and we were reflecting on my achievements and talking about um, how well I happened to be doing with raising Dylan and teaching and um, growing in the worship team. And as I was driving home that day, I was reflecting on that myself, and like, you know, you know what, I am doing well. And Holy Spirit so gently told me, yeah, you are, but that's not why I love you. And that hit me really, uh, hit home. It hit me really hard. Um, I think I cried the rest of the way home. Um, but since then, it's just this understanding and not in my head, but in my heart that he loves me and that I'm worth it regardless of what I do or don't do. That's awesome. And I'm so glad you got that revelation because <laughs> we all need it. And, 
as young women, it's difficult at times, but Jesus is so good. Yeah. I'd like you to talk a little bit about what recently happened to you, because that's an awesome testimony. Another way that he proves to me that he loves me. Um, November 10th, I was driving home from work. Um, Dylan had been dropped off to work at, with me. We were driving home, and uh, another car came into our lane around a curve. Uh, we collided head on. I got knocked out on impact. Uh, so I don't know all of the details, but what I've been told is my car flipped over and landed uh, 15 feet down an embankment on some tree branches. Um, we landed upside down, um, and I woke up hanging from the seatbelt. Um, and God has been showing me since then how he had his arms um, around Dylan and I in the car, and he's shown this to a few other people in the church as well. Um, he showed me also that while I wasn't physically capable to call out his name during this incident, because of the way that I live my life and because of my devotion to him and how much he loves me, that he just protected us and that we dwell under the shadow of the wing of the Almighty. And he just, the enemy tried to take us out that day and God said, nope, <laughs> basically what happened. <laughs> so you were driving, you got knocked out on impact. Yeah. And it's my understanding that Dylan was waiting for you to wake up and he was just very amicable and just making sure you were okay, which is really wonderful. And it's my understanding that you only had a few little injuries, both of you? Yeah, so God's peace overall was just covering the entire situation. Uh, like she said, when I woke up, Dylan was already awake. I don't know if he got knocked out or not, but he was awake by the time I came to, and he was completely calm. He did not cry. He was just waiting for mommy um, and was completely mellow the entire time, covered by God's peace. And also, like she said, very minimal injuries. Uh, my ulna, ulna um, broke, and I had surgery. Um, and it's, it's pretty much, it's pretty good now. Uh, and then Dylan had a broken humerus, which there's already enough bone growth, and it's only been a little over a month since the accident happened. Um, that he doesn't need a cast or a splint or a sling anymore. Um, so his, his arm is basically brand new, and we had some bruises, some scrapes, but other than that, we walked out. Which is miraculous, considering what happened to yeah. your car. Oh, completely totaled. Completely totaled. Are you guys to able to put the picture up? Um, I don't know if we can do that or not, but we'll, okay. look, we'll look into it. I have one final question for you. And I, you talked a little bit about how you came here. You were a child and your parents were looking for a church. Since you've been here, can you talk about just why you've stayed even as an adult? Yeah, um, so I was 14 when we started coming here. It was end of 2007. I had known about God and the Bible for the past five years before that. Um, but it wasn't until the summer of 2008 at their Youth Arise camp that I actually got serious about the Lord um, and truly dedicated my life to Him and got baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues. And since then, it has just been so evident to me that growth is what happens here. There's no being stagnant or complacent or being stuck in your old ways. The, the way that the leadership and the community here is designed, it's to help us grow in our walk with God and to you know, make changes in our life that last. And at this point, I mean, these people are my family. Some are actually blood related to me. Um, others, uh, you know, blood of Jesus, but they're my family and I could not imagine living life without 
this church, it never even crossed my mind to not come here. Um, and it brings me so much joy to see Dylan growing up in the same type of environment. Well, Lier, it has been a pleasure. I'm going to say goodbye to our audience. Is there anything else you'd like to tell them? Be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. And I want to remind you to give us the thumbs up and to be sure and subscribe. You could visit us at conafacecenter.org. You could visit our website. And we are visibly present throughout the week. I've just started doing interviews, and we're interjecting those with some short teachings that I do weekly. And also, we have run live services on Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. And if you live in the Kona area, we want to welcome you to come and visit Kona Faith Center in Captain Cook. God bless you, and mahalo and aloha. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It's only by a spirit could this have been done.